Good afternoon once again to all the members present here and uh, I hope all are safe and well. I'm here again to take you forward with the uh, Google app. Yesterday session we talked about uh, getting started with Google apps. So we learned about Google Drive. We talked about what are the features that you have in G Suite of Education. Uh, which would make uh, learning and teaching process interactive. Uh, today, I'm looking at uh, spending a little more time on one of the apps of uh, Google uh, right now, and that is Slides. What can one do with Google Slides? So Google Slides is nothing but a presentation app. You can use it to create presentations just like this one I'm looking at. So, considering that we are all coming from diverse background right now, before we do more with Google Slides, we are going to go to the basic. We are going to go back and see where these slides are and how do we start working with them. So, I'm going to open my Google Drive. So, this is what we had used yesterday. In the Google Drive, we are going to create a new set of slides called as a deck of slides. So here is a plus button. If I click on this plus button, it is for new. So yesterday we explored how to create a new folder. Again, I'm going to actually start from there because as I said yesterday, when you start creating something, it should be in a particular folder. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, April 8th. So I'm looking at this to be the name of folder in which we are going to do the work for today. Double clicking this folder opens it up. It's right now blank. There is no file in the drive and there in this particular folder. So I'm going to now start creating a new document. And as we saw, you have choice of creating a Google Doc, Google Sheets or Google Slides. I'm going to use Google Slides and you have two options, blank presentation and from a template. Right now, I'm going to start from a blank presentation and then build up on it and look at some features of it before we go into do more with slides. That is the theme of today. So we are not going to spend time in only creating a presentation, but what can you use this app for? So in terms of teaching learning process, how do we give children an opportunity to create? That is the focus of today's uh, session. So again, the moment you open a new slide, first thing first is to name the file. So let's again, I'm going to choose to call it demo and let's say April and eight. So this is the file that we have created. So it should always be named so that in your drive, you can locate it with ease. And then we can start playing with it. In terms of what are the things that you can do, it by default starts with this layout. If you don't like this layout, you can change the layout. You can also look at the right panel here, which opens up these themes, various themes that open up. So if you like any particular one, you can start with that. I particularly like this one. So I'm going to choose this and that becomes my first slide in the deck. This is where I'm going to click and add a title. So I'm going to just still call it demo, right? Demo 08. And if I do that, then it takes that name. I can type in a, a certain subtitle. So I can say that this is a CIT uh, webinar, right? So I can choose my title to be that. So this is how easy it is. You don't need to actually get shapes into it, try to get color into it. These themes are automatically showing up here, which you can choose. Now this is my first slide. How do I add more slides to this? So again, the obvious thing is to look for a plus sign. So there is one plus sign here, which says new slide. So I can click on that new slide and I have another slide, which is following the same format as the theme that we have taken. So here is click to add title. So this is where your uh, subtitle will come or maybe you have a point that you want to make. So let's call it point one. 
And this text box is something which you are free to again add text. So you can type in text here in whichever form that you want. That is simple as simple as that. So nothing very uh, difficult or complicated about it. But what can get interesting is if I want to add, because when we talk about presentations, we say always not to stick to text. In fact, the rule is to have less of text, maybe bullet points. So if I want to get bullet points, I can just highlight the text or I can click here and look at this menu. So what you are looking at here is a possibility of many options given here on the top. So I'm looking at an option of uh, various menu bar. I have layout, theme, transition, and we will be able to change the layout if I want. If I want to get some bullets into it, I can get that. So the moment I click on the text box, all the options for text opens up. And here I can choose perhaps bullet. I can choose perhaps a bullet sign. So I might want to use something like this. And that is what you can definitely start with. What else can you do with it? Let's explore the bar on the top. What are the possibilities? You have file, edit, view, insert. So whenever we see insert, it gets more interesting. So if I want to insert an image, I can insert it from the computer or I can search the web or I can find for an image in the drive. I can use my Google Photos as well. I can choose to take a picture by camera as well. So, and you are. So there are so many options that you can choose uh, to put an image in your slides. So for example, this is the easiest one to start with. I want to search the web. So if I have the web here, I can now in the search bar, I'm going to just type in. So let me move this aside. Yeah, so here if I type in, say again, yesterday we were talking about uh, Taj Mahal. So I want to again stick to Taj Mahal. So suppose I want to get our, our children are asked to prepare um, decks, uh, slides for different monuments of India. So if a child wants to, and, or has been given the uh, certain monument as Taj Mahal, then they can come here and click on the image and then insert. So the, as soon as you click on that image, there is a blue button to a certain position that you want and you can start looking at typing the text, etc. So even searching or inserting images is pretty easy as in this environment. What else one can do? If you look at these uh, possibilities, there are many, you can have a text box, you can insert audio. So when we talk about inserting an audio, it has to be a file. So when I say insert audio, then this uh, audio file has to be available in your Google Drive. That is a way that it inserts audio in this environment. But what you can also do is perhaps insert a video. So if you want to choose a particular video, then that also gets inserted by just searching for the YouTube or you can find the URL or if you have created your own video, save it in the Google Drive. And remember yesterday we said, if you have G Suite for education, then you have unlimited storage. And therefore you can put all the recordings in your Google Drive without the worry of the space. So in the YouTube environment, I can also search. So suppose I am not familiar with, uh, you know, a particular YouTube video that I want to use, but I can search within this environment for a particular YouTube video. And all these options opening up here, I can choose a particular YouTube video. Well, this looks interesting. Learn how to draw the Taj Mahal. Environment. But when you're doing this exercise with your students, you must first watch the video on your own and then have it ready to be selected because sometimes you're not too sure what you are selecting is it worth it or not so you must play that video and then choose it so this is how you get your video inserted we will come back to a few options that are opening up here and uh, learn and see what else can be done let's first explore some more features of the uh, slides itself 
So what else we can insert, we have already talked about. You can also insert a table, chart, diagram, word art, if you want to write your uh, titles in a slight, more stylish way, you can do that. You can also, when we are looking at it uh, as a collaborative activity, perhaps I want uh, to look at the work that the students are doing and comment alongside. Or you are working with a co-teacher and you want to comment on the work that is going in. So for that, there is a possibility that I can select something. So suppose I want to advise the child to change the picture, then I can click on this little comment box. I can comment here. And if I actually know the email ID of that student, then I can write here, uh, put the email ID and I can say, well, why don't you find a better picture? So if I write uh, the email ID along with that comment, then I will also be able to send the notification to the student. And so, you know, you can do something like that. And if I assign it, then definitely it will reach as a notification. So again, since I'm working in an environment where this file is not shared with anyone, so share with one person and you are commenting. So you can always, you know, change the setting and say, no, I would like them to edit as well. So I can comment on it. So this was a different environment because I was the one who was creating it. But in a teacher-student environment, you can do this. Also, when you are looking at uh, making use of the presentation tool, then the best thing is collaborativeness. So this can always share with multiple people or you can get a shareable link from here which by default is in can view i can change it to be can edit or can view or can comment so these three settings can be seen if you want somebody else to work with you you can choose can edit so that the work can go simultaneously in a, a school environment if you want to be a collaborative task, it works very nicely if I have a Google Classroom with me. Then I can share this deck with all the students with the setting that it can be edited by all. If I want only one student to work on it and uh, everyone to work in fact on individual set of deck, then I have other options of uh, select with copy for each student. So right now, we can have more slides added in. So if you want them to work collaboratively, then one good tip will be put the name. So I can have it allocated as a roll number perhaps. And I can say roll number one, roll number two, roll number three. So roll number one will do it on the, this slide and roll number two will work on the second slide and so on. So this can turn into a very well a collaborative task, uh, whichever way you are considering and able to think about. So this is the basics of uh, Google Slide, which uh, I hope uh, you were familiar with, or if not, this has given you some idea of what it looks like. So when we are thinking about using Google uh, Slides, in a different environment where we want children to be the creator, then also there are certain possibilities that are uh, open to you, which I will take up in another few minutes. One of them, of course, I have shown right now that you can ask them to create, collaborate. So when you collaborate, you're asking each child and you can have, you know, if there are 30 children in a class, then they can be allocated a specific monument and they can all do the research and you will have a wonderful gallery of 30 um, nice uh, um, creations where they are putting certain facts about the monument they are talking about, uh, what they like about it. They can insert a video in it. They can get an image uh, of that uh, monument and you in no time will have a great resource ready. And all the children can view each other's work as well. Right, so that is immense. That is very, very strong possibility. Also, uh, going ahead, uh, in fact, going back before I close this, I have it uh, coming up later as well. But let's also look at the little thing that you can do with videos, which in current situation you will find very useful when you want to share a resource with a student. 
So when the children click on it, it opens into an environment where they are able to read all the comments, advertisements, come up, related videos show up. You will find that it is easier to uh, use something like Google Slides where if I have inserted this YouTube video here, now this one, if you had paid attention, turned out to be uh, almost six to seven minutes long. Now you may not want them to watch six to seven minutes or if you have a good 15 minutes video, you don't want them to watch all the 15 minutes of that video. You may want to watch only a segment of it, say two to three minutes. So what can one do? Everything is possible right now here. When I click on this video, there is something called as format options that opened up. So let's explore this very quickly. What are the possibilities here? I can actually make it start and end at a particular time. So there are some videos which have a lot of introduction. You don't want children to see all of that introduction. You want them to only focus on that one segment, could be just a two-minute segment where something important is being discussed or it is uh, what you cannot do in the classroom. You cannot, your textbook or your uh, paper doesn't allow you to show. So in this case, what you can do is, if I start the video right now, you might be able to hear some music or not. But if I play this music, a video, I can use with time it needs to start at. So I can just click on, so what I did was the moment I reached a certain point, I clicked on use current time. So now the video, when I look at the settings, it will always start at the current time. And let me take it further ahead and I can say, okay, it's going to end at this time. So out of that six minutes and more long, I made it of five minutes or less video. I can also stop somewhere here and I can say, all right, let's use just this much. So once that is the setting is done, then whenever you play the video, it will start at 36 seconds from the time of beginning and stop at three minutes, 54 seconds. So you have to play the video number of times to figure out these settings and the timings that exactly work for you. You will also click on auto play when presenting. So this will help that when you share this with the children, then when you click on present, then as soon as this uh, slide loads, this video will start playing. And watch here it is. So it started at 36 seconds. And if I uh, kind of mute this, but play this, it will keep on going and it will stop at the time that the other or wish that it should. So it is as simple as that. But then how do you use it with your students? So before we close this aspect of the slides, let me go to say, uh, how do we share this, right? So if I go to file, there is something called as publish to the web. So you will not share it with the editing rights or the view rights or comment. Try to uh, use the idea of publish to the web so that you will get a link which you can now share with the children. And that is the link which will open it like a PowerPoint show that you used to use. And it will not let the children uh, edit anything in the content. So if you just copy this and maybe make a short URL of this, you can send it out to the children through your own school media so that only the slide with the video that little part which you want to teach the children, which you want children to see, will right. So that is definitely something which you must try uh, because in your classroom environment, it will make a big difference. So again, as I said, it is listed in one of my do more with the slides aspects. So this is part of that. So do more with slides. Do not restrict yourself to only creating the lessons or presentations which you are presenting and uh, maybe the participants like right now you are watching. Once this is done, let's go back to uh, what I had uh, ready for you and look at some more features of Google Slides. So what you have just seen is right now, how do we start a new slide? Uh, we have seen how, what are the features, how do we add a slide, but there are many other things that you can do. 
So what are the other things that you can do? One is it doesn't always have to be the uh, regular template that you see of the slides. You can always change the page setup. So you can just have to go to file page setup and change it. Change it to look like maybe the uh, A4 size that we are comfortable with our students looking at or where the text fits in more comfortably. So you can choose various kind of page setup, whichever works for you. So this is a small tip, but it will uh, help you to bring a certain uh, possibilities in the way you use Google Slides. Going ahead, once you have that kind of a format, A4 size, then what can one do? You can actually create these infographics. Well, they're not typically like infographics, but these are posters, which you can create for yourself, but also look at it from the side of student. Would you not like them to use their time right now and create something? So give them a basic template, tell them the theme, tell them what your expectations are, and if you are comfortable with the customized size that it comes with, uh, as the regular size that it comes with, then it's fine. Otherwise, customize it to the size that you want. And they would be able to get all the things here. They can put some uh, links. They can maybe put a QR code linked to a video that they might have created, or it could be linked to a URL, which is a YouTube video. But that is something where you are giving children an opportunity to show uh, their learning, to express how uh, they are using the technology and learning as well. So if you are doing a topic, then that topic is getting processed here. So they can be looking at a lesson being taught, now summarize it, but use images, use different colors, use different texts, use different symbols and so on. So that is something that can definitely add value to it. We can also look at uh, which this part we had talked about to insert the videos. So this one is one of the very famous uh, videos by uh, Sir Ken Robinson and it's a very long video. But if you want to only focus on one little aspect of it, edit it by just inserting it into the slide. You don't need any fancy uh, software uh, or a very, uh, you know, a skill, special skill set to do this. You can just put that little portion into the slide and put it in autoplay and then share it the way I have suggested. So this is an example of a video audio inserted in Google Slides. So when you want children to hear your voice, you want to give instruction to your uh, children, you can use various mediums to record your voice, but put that file in the Google Drive and then link it. So again, on the slide, you could not see any symbol of the speaker, but I had added a V audio and it was linked so that the icon of the speaker doesn't show. But the moment the slide plays up, the audio starts playing as well. So that is definitely one of the ways that you are looking at uh, options. You can also look at uh, linking the slides. So you can have uh, various, uh, uh, maybe just as in this particular GIF, it's showing that on the top there can be the list of names and each name is linked to the slide where the student is going to work on. And you give them the instruction that you will click on your name and it will take you to the slide. It will also help you to perhaps make a kind of a table of contents. So that is definitely also a possibility. So you can link between the slides itself. So that's one of the features. Again, how you use it, it is up to you in terms of how, uh, what your requirement is. Also, if you have been working with Google Slides and you have a whole repository of them, you can always pick information, one other slide that you had made earlier, and import it. So if you have to go to just the file and then import slides, you will be able to pick which deck you want. And from that deck, if you open it, so file, import slides, open up the presentations, choose the set of slides from where you want to move a slide to the current deck and which one. It could be multiple slides as well. So you don't have to duplicate your work and it very nicely fits in. So that is something which is, again, a useful tip for you.
Okay, so this is the one that we are going to take our uh, almost the next uh, time that is left with us. And we are looking at creating certain interactive tasks for students. So if you have something as simple as this uh, for many uh, level and different subjects, you can use just the slides to create interactive tasks where it is drag and drop activity. So it can go at any level. It could be uh, maybe secondary level, it could be primary level, it can even be the senior secondary level where you want children to put their concepts together and uh, arrange them, put them in a form which perhaps link it with a way the chapter developed or as a history uh, timeline that you want them to create. So how does one create this is going to be the focus uh, in the next 10 minutes and we will see how we are going to be uh, doing that. Also, to make slides and to get more value added to your slides, you can look for uh, some special add-ons. So one of the add-ons that is very powerful is Peer Deck. So you can try to search for that and find good ways of using it. But it is something which makes lesson so very interactive, even when you are not sitting in front of students. So uh, this is something which is a must try to, even in a remote learning situation, uh, where you want to reach out to the children, you want to interact with them. So you can create slides with peer deck, which is student based. So student will work at their own time, not necessarily when you are conducting the session. So give it a try, do some work on it and search for it. So these are some of the add-ons that I have uh, explored and they have worked very well for me. So you might want to try some of them and let us know if you find something else uh, which has worked for you. Uh, and of course, I would be uh, not uh, doing justice to this if I don't talk about how easy it is to make beautiful slides. So there are two websites I'm sharing with you, which would allow you to find very nice, use ready to use templates, both for PowerPoint and uh, for Google Slides, and which you can just use from the website and then customize it for your own need. So do check out the two websites that are coming up right now. So now let's focus on something which is like a hands-on exercise. So we are going to create. So I'm going back to this uh, task, this activity, where we have created some interactive tasks. So how does one create such drag and drop tasks for our children? So again, it's going to be a basic set of instructions given to you and then you can modify as you would like to um, work with it. So if you are ready for it, then again, we'll go to Google Drive. So we go to Google Drive. My folder is still open there. If not, then find the folder in which you want to create it, right? And now let's uh, go to creating, starting the one. So this is going to be done in Google Slides. So I'm going to click on new and I will start with a blank presentation. So again, uh, before we do that, uh, let's just also look at this activity which you just saw. How does it look like and what are the things that you can notice about it? So before we create it, right? So this is the kind of our background uh, this uh, slide has. And the only thing that is movable is these images, which I want to drag and drop. But the rest of it, the timeline, place all these things are not moving so obviously a background has been created and then on that these images have been placed which the students will then move around and place at the right point right so this is how we are going to start we are first going to create this background and then from there we are going to talk about how what kind of uh, things i need to place on it so if I open the blank presentation, then in this, we are going to first get a slight color. So I can go to background and I can choose the color. So I can choose a certain color for the background. So let's choose blue. And 
once that's there and you can also insert image here so if you have a good image uh, which is explaining a certain concept or image of uh, say uh, parts of flower and you want children to label them so you can try to insert those images in the background as well so if, if for science if you have a certain organ uh, whose image you want to show here and you have a clear image that you can use then please try to use choose image again you can search in all the different ways so you can upload or you can have by url google drive or even google image search and then once it is done let's click on done i'm going to change the layout to blank i don't want any text boxes inside so i'm going to replicate this timeline uh, only that i have shown so for that once the background is there we will click on this little line tool and find something with arrow so i can choose the arrow i can place this arrow right here so this will become our timeline and now we will try to work on this so i can look at this arrow which is in place and uh, now let's put those marks on it so i can again choose the line tool right and put certain marks on this so i can have a mark placed here uh, let's not we don't want arrow so i'm going to just choose line tool and we'll put these little segments okay why is it giving me this i don't want line end so i'm going to keep change that and good thing always is to do copy paste right easier so i'm just going to copy and put four marks on that time and i can go and place them at the appropriate point wherever i would like the timeline to show up so once that's there you can also uh use text box but i prefer using shapes so i'm going to use the shapes and i'm going to take the circular and rectangles and i'm going to place a small rectangle here to indicate which year we are talking about so i can choose a certain uh, say let's start with 2000 and uh, i have one um, time stamp ready if you want you can change its color so this is fill color so if you wish to it can be a different color i can change the font uh, if you think it will become more effective uh, and font size all that can be done i can change the font color to perhaps something more uh, clear so this is one again let's copy and paste it three more times and drag and put them in the place that you want and change the year so we'll just move this so they look very kind of similar you can do it as you wish you can have even different shapes it really doesn't matter so i can change it to maybe 2005 i can change this to maybe 2015 this can become 2020 okay and i can as i said choose different color if you want to you can make it as fancy or as simple or as colorful as you want i uh, am happy with uh, the shape that uh, color that it was earlier so i'm going to just undo that part so this is what it might look like you can get a little more uh, specific about you know everything kind of sticking together or you can have one year here one year on the other side now this is something which you can always play with once it's there let's also label it so i'm going to use let's say insert and a word art and i'm going to uh, call it uh, timeline so this is what you have here let's move it up and uh, maybe give it a different font and uh, let's choose this and uh, change the color so these are things which you know you all are expert at you can all uh, work on it and try to give that uh, special touch of yours but what is going to work for us is that once this is ready what i'm going to do is i'm not going to put the objects here i'm going to now download this as a png file so i'm going to go to file and i can download so there are various options in which you can download it i'm going to download it as a png file 
So once it is downloaded as a PNG file, so I'm going to just call it a timeline and it will come, let's say here. So once it is downloaded, it is saved. To create your interactive task, what you have to do is you will again add a new slide and use this. So I'm changing the layout again to blank and use this image to be the background. So here is the background and I'm going to choose image so I can browse. I can also drag and drop this file here and it will get uploaded. And that's it. So now you can see the difference between the two. Here everything is draggable, but here it's a fixed. And now you can put your various objects, images, or ask children to do the research and get uh, the content that needs to be placed, information that needs to be placed, and get the task completed. So this is something which is very basic, but it is very, very powerful and it works very well in all the situations where you want to either uh, give them as an individual task or you can uh, give it to them as a collaborative task as well. So this is something for you to try and see how it fits in your curriculum. It's very important for you to see uh, whether it meets your needs or not. So does it fit in your curriculum? Does it work for your lesson or not? is what I'm going to stop and leave you with to think about and see if it helps. So thank you so much, uh, Nidhi and uh, Dr. Angel and Professor Vera uh, for giving the opportunity. So a few questions are there, uh, uh, which have already been posted in the chat group. So I'll just ask ma'am uh, that uh, uh, can how uh, we can share the slides with how many people? Somebody has asked with how many people we can share the slides? Yeah, there's no such restriction as long as if you have their email IDs or if there is a Google group, uh, you can share through that as well. Okay, thank you. And the second question is, uh, uh, can you uh, uh, tell them uh, uh, or repeat it? How can they can how can they uh, get Google Slide app or in here as well in, as uh, in, uh, separately? In your Drive, Google app uh, slides are already there. So when you open Google Drive, you will find, so again, if I, uh, I'm going to just try and give you a view. So here is the Google Drive and you already have the app of slides here. So you can just click on slides and it will take you to the place or you can type in slides.google.com as well and all the slides are there. So it is nothing uh, that you need to buy. So it is again the word app sometimes is distracting. It is not something that you have to add on. But yes, if your phone by uh, itself doesn't have the app coming from Google, then you might have to go to Play Store and then add it. In. That is. Okay, so uh, there is another question. Uh, sir, uh, please ask your question. My question is, uh, should we download the G Suite for one person in a, in a school or uh, every student should download the G Suite? And the second question, okay, this is the first question. The second question is, uh, uh, the, the docsgoogle.com, uh, the site what is uh, uh, referred here, uh, should I go to that site or the G Suite itself will uh, take me to that site if I subscribe to that? Sir, uh, G Suite cannot be downloaded. It is uh, um, as an online uh, web tool that you are looking at. So G Suite for education by itself, there's nothing that you can download it. Okay, so I um, I'm not able to perhaps explain that better. But if you have a Google account, Gmail account, then you can see the Google Drive in your Gmail as well. So the nine apps, uh, nine app grid that we saw yesterday and the app launcher that you saw yesterday. Uh, so if I uh, may show you again, uh, that is possibly, you know, something that you can explore with. And the second question was, where do we go to docs.google? So again, docs.google.com is a way to reach uh, or Google dot, no, docs.com. So we are looking at opening a new document if you want then in that case, you will be able to, so I'm just trying to move this window from here. Yeah. So here is uh, where if I open, it's Drive. You start with a Google Drive, but for that, you need to have a Gmail account. But if you're looking for a G Suite of Education, so this is our uh, 
app that grid as or app launcher that you say so if you have a gmail account it's already there g su for education is a education domain account so your school has to register for the education domain and then also the similar environment would be available online for your children and for you with lot of other um, features of management okay so if uh, i register it for my school uh, all children will get the benefit of that yes but you That's can't register way. your uh, leaders will have to follow a certain procedure so we Thank shared you, some resources yesterday and uh, they would be available on ncrt webinar page uh, you can try them out thank you ma'am thank you so much we have hello good question. afternoon ma'am Uh, may i ask the question now ma'am yes sir ma'am uh, only one request was there to you and nidhi ma'am uh, if we just get to know uh, a day prior what is going to be the topic for tomorrow so that while uh, say attending your webinar if we can also try on our computers hands on i i think that would be better ma'am sure sir actually uh, we will be sharing uh, I'll, i'll be just sharing the details uh after the session gets over the questions are over we have already created a web page on our website and you can explore it let's take a few questions at the end i'll just uh, let you know uh, where to find uh, the details of at least for uh, uh, coming two three days right thank you so much ma'am thank, thank you so much uh, there is a question uh, i would like to uh, yes um, uh, mr ask? akash uh, khajuria uh, please ask yeah yeah hello good afternoon sangeeta ma'am Okay. I have a question uh, that can be change or save that Google Drive as into a movie. Sorry. Uh, can we change or turn that Google slide we are preparing into a movie? Uh, into so that that can be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't thought of that. Um, you can record as you are playing, uh, but you can't turn it. There is no feature here which will save it as a movie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask my question? Uh, yes, sir, just a minute. Uh, uh, I would, I would like to unmute uh, Mr. Tejas Desai. He just asked. Tejas, he has already asked. asked. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, you ask, sir. Smile. Yes. This is Smile. from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, good evening, madam. Can we download the slides uh, to our desktop? And if it is downloadable, what are the suitable uh, applications to open on uh, in offline mode that is one question the second one is uh, can we group the icons and the symbols or structures whatever uh, inserted into the uh, slide so that we can move all together at once yes uh, so your first point yes you can download them as an offline and uh, you can look at uh, the possibility of file and download so there are features of the same as powerpoint and dot odp pdf text file as well jpg png so these features are there you can and you can also choose settings in so today maybe not another day we will talk about how you can put certain settings with google drive itself so that some features of it are available offline also so in terms of low connectivity you can still at least with basic features coming to your second uh, question yes you can uh, group various texts and images so if i select two multiple uh, images then i can go to arrange and i have order and i have align i have center on page rotate and then group so i can group them and you can then move them around together and uh, whatever else is uh, required you can do that okay uh, i think uh, we have had uh, enough questions uh, we don't have much time now so those who have still have question can put it in the chat group quickly we can um, uh, deal with them later on we can answer them and for your everybody's information i'll just uh, 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 tell you that i'll just like to share that we have already created a page on our website in the events you can uh, click on the uh, cit's website and uh, click on the events there is a uh, uh, the section called webinar you can click on that and you will see basic information about this webinar and uh, those who will be presenting in the coming 2 3 uh, days we will be sharing the ba uh, small banner post or whatever you call it uh, also but for your reference for next 2 3 days who are going to present or uh, one day uh, we have already shared you can just check it uh, in, on our website 
so uh, now i would like to thank everyone uh, for uh, joining us here uh, for this webinar uh, the second day of the webinar and i would uh, like to thank um, especially thank uh, ms uh, sangeeta gulati uh, she she is the head of the mathematics department sanskriti school new delhi and she is a, a national icit awardee 2016 those who joined today and they were not present yesterday so for them and she is a, a certified uh, a uh, google innovator and trainer also mm -hmm. so we had a nice session with her and uh, uh, hope to uh, meet uh, tomorrow again with all of you and uh, i would like to uh, uh, wish you all a uh, healthy and safe life ahead in, in this uh, session of lockdown thanks a lot thank you thank you